Hi everyone uh, and welcome to today's webinar. I hope you all can uh, hear me well. Um, it's getting uh, a bit late today, so I, I will try to keep the presentation uh, below 45 minutes, including questions. The questions you can just uh, ask uh, at any time, um, but I will wait till the end of the presentation to to answer the questions. My name is uh, Kasper Raun. I will be today's presenter. I'm a building performance engineer at Window Master, and I have a master's degree from the Technical University of Denmark. Today's agenda. First, we will start with an introduction on natural ventilation. We'll talk about how it will should be functioning a natural ventilation system and where we are usually seeing a, a standalone natural ventilation system in which type of buildings and rooms and where we will often need a mixed mode system to ensure sufficient indoor air quality and thermal comfort. The um, natural ventilation calculator we have made for our website is, uh, of course, a part of uh, investigating if natural ventilation is feasible for a specific project. There's, of course, other things that are important to consider, and therefore we will go into design guidelines for natural ventilation systems. Finally, we'll go into the natural ventilation calculations and I will uh, show you just an example of, of how to use the calculator on our website. This is a great illustration of what is required in a high quality natural ventilation system or mixed mode system. We will of course need windows to the outside as uh, seen here. These are, should Preferably from our recommendation be small, higher located windows. This will ensure a great airflow into the room, but still reduce problems with noise and draft. The, um, the quality of the ventilation system will of course depend on having sufficient amount of window opening and, um, and this should be considered from projects to projects. Skylights, as we can see here, are of course always uh, beneficial to have for projects, uh, but they are not always available. We will need uh, sensors in the rooms that are naturally ventilated to measure CO2 and temperature to accurately control the windows. Then we will need a weather station, as shown here, that can measure the temperature and CO2 outdoors. This can also uh, measure the wind speed and wind direction to have control of every individual window on the facade, or we can also make them in, in groups together and control every group individually. So we know exactly how much air we are letting into the, the building. But the question is then how much, how much air can you achieve through the window openings that you have for a project? How large an air change rate can you, can you really get? And this will of course depend on, whether, on which ventilation principle you're, you're working with. For the same amount of opening area, you can achieve, for example, a much larger air uh, air change rate for cross ventilation compared to a single sided ventilation system. So it's very important to take into account in your calculation which kind of strategy you're using. The last strategy is of course stack ventilation, which can be perceived in different kinds of ways. It will of course always use the thermal buoyancy, but in a single zone you will typically have the windows located in different levels and thereby use the thermal, uh, thermal buoyancy to drive the air and secure good airflow. 
but you can also have a building where many multiple zones on different levels are sharing the same atrium uh, used for the exhaust of the air. For this type of building, it can be more challenging to calculate the uh, or to know which part of the building you should use in your air change calculations. And for this, we recommend to, for example, take a section of the of the atrium and use it use the opening area for this part in your calculations combined with the zone you're investigating what about when you're using a mixed mode system how should you calculate the air chains for these type of systems and it will of course depend how the systems are cooperate, cooperating for a more standard mixed mode system where you have two individual systems, one natural and one mechanical. The natural part of the system will of course work independently and alone. So you will need the same type of calculations to know how much air can you achieve by the natural ventilation system alone. If you are having a natural ventilation system supported by a mechanical fan exhaust, the air change rate that you are able to achieve will of course be partly determined by the, the flow rate of the exhaust fan, but it's still very valuable to investigate how much, how big an air change can, can the natural ventilation system achieve by itself. This will help you to design the size of the mechanical fan. And it will also allow you to have an idea of how big a part of the year can you use the natural ventilation without support of the, of the mechanical fan. From our experience, we have found that there are usually a, a type of room um, that will be more um, that will be greater for the use of natural ventilation alone. In general, we see that rooms or areas with a, with a large volume uh, are great for natural ventilation. Uh, this can be, for example, hallways or shopping centers or atriums and gyms. Um, in hallways and shopping centers, we are of course, not uh, seeing people being stationary at the same, in the same way that you're seeing in an office space. So there's not the same um, problems with, with draft, for example, because people are just passing through. And in gyms, people are, of course, they will have a higher metabolic rate, but as, as they are doing sports and so on, they will not be as vulnerable to, to draft problems. Office spaces can be a little bit tricky to determine. And this will, of course, depend a lot on the climate condition for the uh, location that we're investigating. But in many cases, it is possible to uh, naturally ventilate an office space without the use of mechanical ventilation. But in scenarios where you have a, a very warm climate condition and um, maybe a, a large occupant density, you will in some cases need um, support by a mechanical system to ensure sufficient uh, indoor environment. In uh, rooms like conference rooms and classrooms, you will usually have a high uh, occupancy density. And uh, here it will be very beneficial to have a mixed mode system because uh, especially in classrooms where you have people stationary throughout the whole day, in cold climates, it can be, it can be or challenging to to make sure that the persons, the farthest away from the windows are getting a sufficient air without causing draft problems for the people closest to the window. 
And this is why that we at Window Master is always emphasizing that a natural ventilation system should be designed. Having a automatic system that is just opening and closing the windows are not really feasible because you can have problems with, with draft, for example. You're not controlling the exact amount of air you're letting into the room. And a manual system, for example, is a problem for two reasons. One is that the occupants in the building should not really be going back and forth to open windows. It's not the reason why they're there. And the other reason is that when people is actually opening the windows, it's often too late and problems like headaches and other yeah, other sheens will will be will it will be too late you will already have have uh, the problems but to design a great natural ventilation system you will of course need some knowledge about about how to to design it and have guidelines uh, which is especially very important in the early phases of the design and right now uh, there's on the internet for example there's very limited material on on natural ventilation and on on guidelines and especially for for calculators on natural ventilation it's even more limited so we will we will like to help filling the the void that is currently existing and and help even people that are not uh, really experienced with using natural ventilation have an, have easy access to design guidelines and to calculate the achievable air change rate so we are making sure that that people who really want to use natural ventilation are not turned away from it because it's it can be too complicated to find out if your building is feasible for a natural ventilation system. And when you're designing a natural ventilation system, in the end, to, to really get a good idea of the indoor uh, environment, of the quality, you can, of course, make it very complicated. There's a lot of different factors that play a role in the final indoor environment. but for the calculator that we have made, it's not the point. We want to just have easy access to how much air can you achieve with, with a natural ventilation system in the beginning of the design phase. And this is really the purpose of this calculator. It's to give people easy access to really what should be basic knowledge and you can kind of compare it to, to a mechanical system where you have data sheets for, for example, a, a ceiling diffuser. You can easily find the type of diffuser that you want to work with and the size. And based on what, what flow length you want the, the air to have when, when uh, supplied to the room, you can see how, much, how big a flow rate you can achieve but this is not really possible with, with natural ventilation. You can't really look in a data sheet for a window and see how much or how big an air change can you achieve with, with a certain window. So we want to make this possible. And another great thing about the calculator is that it's placed on a website. It's not in an Excel sheet, for example. So that means you are able to, uh, to access it on every platform, really. So you can use it on your, your cell phone. In the early design phase of a building project, there's, of course, many different parameters that you should take into account to really investigate the, the indoor environment. But that's not really a reason to make it more complicated than it, than it has to in the beginning, where you just want to invest in, investigate what possibilities you have to include, what systems can you include in the building. 
So we just want a basic knowledge about the air change rate that you can achieve with a specific design of the building. We have tried to simplify the calculator that we're using to find the, the um, achievable air change rate, but there will of course be some input that are necessary to have knowledge about um, and some design guidelines that should be considered. These are, for example, the geometry of the windows and the placement of the windows, where we are saying that for the room height of the natural ventilated room, we are recommending that we should not have uh, below 2.5 meters and preferably more. For single-sided ventilation ventilated room, the depth of the room should not exceed 2.5 times the, the room height. For cross ventilation and stack ventilation, this can be up to five times the room height. And the thing about stack ventilation is that the distance is now from the facade to the openings in the roof. And if you're having the, the roof opening placed in the middle of the building, you can actually have a, a distance from facade to facade of of five times or of ten times the room height. For the window themselves, we want preferably and we recommend to have them placed at two meters or more above the floor level. And we recommend a window height that's approximately in between 400 to 600 millimeters. They should not really be below 400 millimeters and they can of course be above 600 millimeters, but this will make the design more challenging in, for example, relation to draft problems. From experience, we have found um, that we have some rule of thumbs in relation to, to how big an effective opening area is, is required for different ventilation strategies. And for single-sided ventilation, you can usually have an effective opening area corresponding to between 1.5 and 3% of the, of the natural, naturally ventilated floor area. For cross ventilation and stack ventilation, this is much lower. You will only need approximately 1 to 1.5% 1 of the floor area. And for mixed mode ventilation, it will of course depend uh, if you have a standalone naturally naturally ventilation system that is only working when when the naturally ventilation is uh, is activated, and of course then the strategy that you are using. It should be said that these rule of thumbs are for a northern European climate and the climate zone will of course play also a big role, but it's just important to have a basis because we have experienced that in some cases, people are, are calculating up to 25% of the floor area. And this would, I think it would correspond to a whole facade opening. And compared to, to our rules of thumbs, it's a pretty big difference. So it's just very important to have a basis. For example, if you're calculating an, a project with single-sided ventilation, you can start with an opening area of 2% of the, uh, or correspond, an opening area corresponding to 2% of the floor area. And if you need more, uh, or a higher air change rate, you can just increase the, the opening area. To calculate the effective opening area, you, you will need the, uh, geom the, the geometrical opening area and calculate it by the uh, discharge coefficient of the, of the window, um, which is commonly for bottom and top hung window. This is commonly between 1.65 and 1 uh, or 0 0.65 uh, to uh, 0 0.7. This is just an example of 
of calculations of the effective opening area. You can see that for a window that is 400 by 1200 millimeters and a chain effective chain length of 200 millimeters, you can achieve approximately a, an effective opening area of 0 0.19 square meters. To put the natural ventilation design in context, if you want, for example, in a Northern European climate to have pure natural ventilation during the summer, for tr a traditional office space with a moderate window area and solar shading, you can actually use single-sided ventilation throughout the whole summer. But for classrooms and conference rooms, we are usually experiencing that for the same condition with moderate window area and solar shading, you should use a cross or stack ventilation principle to have sufficient airflow. And as I mentioned earlier, gyms and atriums and hall hallways are excellent for natural ventilation. So you can usually easily naturally ventilate these areas throughout the, the whole year. For the calculator, we have tried to make it as simple as possible. And uh, therefore, we have reduced the amount of, of required input as much as possible. As you can see, we need some basic information about the location of the building. We need the building height, which uh, is determining for the wind pressure that the building will, will experience. Then we need the volume of the room and for, for rooms with, for example, different uh, ceiling heights at, at different areas, we just need an estimate of the, of the room volume. Of course, as accurate as possible will be better, but you don't have really have to uh, to accurately measure every in every part of the room to have a have a good idea of the achievable air change rate. To make it simple, we have to, uh, we have made the total opening area per input uh, or per window group as an input, and this allows you to easily play with the with the tool to find the the uh, desired air change rate. So if you are using yeah, the trial and error method, you can easily go back and change the, the opening area per, per window group. If you are having one window group and you are pressing calculate air change, it will be single-sided ventilation. The program or the tool knows uh, itself that if only one group is added to the to the calculations it will be a single sided principle if you uh, choose add another window group you can get as as many window groups really as as desired on the figure to the right you can see the different window groups that has been uh, that have been added for the calculation currently and as you can see, there's some facade, for example, the northern one here, that has more than uh, one window group. And this is because that the vertical placement of the windows ha has changed. And therefore, you need a new window group to ensure that, that this is calculated correctly into the, to the final air change rate. Currently, for the... Um, orientation of the windows. We have chosen to just include north, east, south, and west. This has been done to, again, keep it simple. We want this tool to be very easily to use. And also we are experiencing that most, that most buildings you are calculating will be somewhat square. And as the, it, as it is, um, as a building will, if for a square building, it doesn't really matter if the 
building is placed from southwest to northeast, if the if the for example you're having cross ventilation and the parallel surfaces are used, the you will achieve the same amount of air for uh, parallel surfaces from west to east as from southwest to northeast. So it's not really a um, a big deal for the calculations. That said, if if you have a project with an odd shaped building and you don't feel comfortable with that the that this calculator for example can give you an accurate result you uh, result you are uh, always more than welcome to for example contact us and we can provide support with with uh, making sure that that the right assumptions are included into the the calculations again to simplify the process you can see here that we have a building that's not really completely square, but we have just simplified it into some square figures to make sure that we are calculating or making the calculations easy. And you will still get an accurate um, indication of the achievable air change rate. Now we're getting to some examples of um, of the tool. For the first example, we have a new office building. It, um, it is utilizing the stack ventilation principle and we have natural ventilation throughout the whole year in the office area. Uh, for the um, air supply, we have high located facade windows. And for the air exhaust, we have windows loca located above a hallway. This will give us a vertical difference between supply and exhaust of, a bit of about 1.5 meters. We have a traditional office load and the effective opening area is corresponding to approximately 1.5% of the floor area. So it's, it's uh, in the interval that we showed for the FROMS rule er earlier. I will now just quickly show the um, I will just show the same calculation made in the tool on our web page just to show how quickly uh, this calculation can be done to find what air change rate you can achieve for for this specific building we have a window height of approximately eight meters or building height of approximately eight meters and we have a volume of about 140 cubic meters. This is saved the initial information that we gave. And we could also uh, on the initial side choose the, the building location. And for this project, we have in the we are located in the suburb. For the first window group, we have soften uh, orientated windows. They are located in the facade and they are placed two meters above the floor. We have an opening area of approximately 0 0.5 square meters. As you can see here, the discharge coefficient is set an, as a an, uh, default value, uh, value. And for if you don't have any preferences for this value, you can always use 0 0.7 as this is a, a commonly used value for bottom hung and top hung windows. The same is uh, applicable for the window height. If you don't have any other preferences, we recommend that uh, you're using 0 0.5 meters as a window height. For example, it's between the in between the interval that I mentioned before from 400 to 600 millimeters. Then we are adding a new window group with a northern orientation. This has approximately the same um, opening area, and it's now located in a pitch roof below 10 degrees 
of inflammation. It's placed at 0 0.5 meters above the floor. So there's a difference between the two window groups of 1.5 meters now, and we're using the same values for the discharge coefficient and the window height. Then we're adding this group. Now you can just easily calculate how much air can you achieve or how large an air change rate can you achieve for this specific zone, this office zone. And you can now see, for example, if you have a summer scenario with a, uh, with no temperature difference between the, the indoors and the outdoors, you can have an air change rate of five, five times an hour at a wind speed of four meters per second. If it's cold outside and you have a large temperature difference, this will, for the same wind speed, be eight and a half times an hour. And um, this is, of course, a pretty large air change rate, but then you have the possibility of having the control of the windows so you can open the windows accordingly to what air change rate you are required to have. This was just a quick example of the of the calculator and we can show some other examples for example this one is for a renovated office building now you're just using the cross ventilation principle and you will end up with an effective opening area corresponding to approximately 1% of the of the ventilated floor area and as it's cross ventilation with the windows located in the same level it will only be the wind speed that is determining for the for the air change rate that you can achieve in the room but you can see for this example you will still be able to get a very great air change rate with a, a pretty low wind speed. The last example is an atrium with a moderate load. As I mentioned earlier, atriums have a very great uh, space volume, so they are easy to, to ventilate naturally. Um, and for this case, we have found that an effective opening area corresponding to 1.5% of the floor area is enough to give us great air change rates. In the end, I would just make sure that we consider, we have calculated now how much air can you achieve with a specific design, what, is, what air change rate is really possible to get for a specific project. But we should still consider the, the strategies that we can use in a naturally ventil uh, natural ventilation system to have a great indoor environment. For example, for summer strategy, we can have in the early morning, we can have background ventilation just to make a flush before the people are arriving. During the occupied hours, we will usually uh, control the windows based on temperature and CO2 and at the and at the night we will if it's possible use um, utilize night cooling and this will greatly reduce the the load during the occupied hours to make sure that's not the same uh, restrictions for the for the natural ventilation systems during the day in the winter, we will also most likely have some background ventilation during the early morning, just to make sure that the, the air is fresh before the people are arriving. During occupied hours, we will now utilize uh, a pulsing ventilation strategy maybe. And this, is, um, this strategy is made of you opening the windows multiple times during an hour. And this will allow you to ensure that the occupants are getting fresh air, but without causing 
draft problems. So you can supply the rooms with actually very cold air with a relatively high air airspeed. But because you're only doing it for a short duration, it will not be discomfortable. It would not result in draft problems. And then in the winter time, you will of course not utilize night cooling. It's not an issue here. And between the, in the transition period between summer and winter, we will use some middle ground between those two strategies. As I've explained now, it's possible with the calculator that we have put on our website to calculate how big an air change rate can you achieve with a specific design. And if you combine this with general knowledge about natural ventilation systems and great de uh, design, uh, design guidelines and experience, you can actually get a long way in designing a natural ventilation system only based on this. But if you want, of course, a complete investigation of the discomfort throughout the whole year, uh, for example, the, the uh, number of hours above 20, 26 degrees Celsius, you will, of course, need to use some dynamic simulation. And if you're having a building with where you are concerned about problems with, with air movement in specific zones, you will probably maybe need CFD calculation. And this is, this is uh, something that, that you're more than welcome to contact us for if you need support with, with uh, these types of, uh, of calculations and investigations of the indoor environment. This was all I had for today. Thank you to, to all for joining today's webinar. I know it's a bit late for some, and I hope you all had a great day. Um, if, you know, if you want to know more about natural, vent, uh, natural ventilation, you are more than welcome to, to contact us at Window Master. We will try to supply you with as much information as possible and give you support in, um, in whatever project you might have. We have a lot of uh, material available on our website uh, that explains different benefits of natural ventilation and also mixed mode systems. We have, for example, an, uh, an e-book uh, on natural ventilation available on our uh, website and it's a very great um, material for for gaining good knowledge about natural ventilation systems.